Ladies and gentlemen, in this Red Gaming Centercom video, we're going to be reviewing MSI's GTX 1070 Gaming X graphics card. We'll be checking out the card's build quality, performance in games and benchmarks, MSI's specific applications and features, and also have a look at the Pascal architecture. As a disclaimer, we were sent this graphics card to review, however, it was only a review sample which has since gone back to MSI, and all opinions are our own and this is not a sponsored video. What first struck us about the Gaming X was the high build quality and aesthetic of the card. While beauty is of course subjective, my own personal opinion is one of the best looking GPUs that I've used. To the rear of the card is a simple black backplate with MSI's Dragon logo emblazoned upon it. It's simple enough aesthetically to not be overbearing, but its primary purpose is to keep the GPU cool of course. MSI have also opted to use their Zero Throw Z fan technology to cool things down as quietly as possible while either under load or full operation, but we'll get more to that in just a second. The Gaming X features the usual plethora of connections, SLI fingers for those who need to run high-end displays, three display ports, one HDMI, and a single dual-link DVI-D connection. For power, you'll need to plug in both a 6 and an 8-pin power connector to meet the card's power draw requirements, which, with no user overclocking, is about 150 watts. The Gaming X combines the company's twin Frozer 6 and Torx 2.0 fan technology. The company claims this fan design pushes an additional 22% of air to help keep the card cool under load. We can't confirm the additional air exactly, but what we can confirm is that the GPU is silent under usual operation, and even pushing the fans to 100% manually, the GPU was much quieter than the majority of GPUs under normal operation. As a side note, the fans do not spin up if the GPU is operating at under 60 degrees, and thus light gaming or regular desktop use and the fans will sit totally idle. MSI have also placed LEDs on the front and side of the Gaming X, allowing you to change the colour using software, we'll show that later on in the video, of the logo and the lighting pattern on the front and side of the cards. It is a shame you can't control the colours of the front of the GPU, but with the red faceplate it probably would have caused a clash in colouring. It does look rather nice in a rig though, and for folks with a window cases I imagine it will be a pretty popular feature. So let's delve into what's changed with Nvidia's Pascal architecture, which lies at the heart of the GTX 1070. Looking at a comparison of the various Pascal and Maxwell cards, you can see that MSI's Gaming X enjoys a substantial clock speed advantage, boosting up to 2 GHz on the core, more on this later, which is considerably higher than that of a regular GTX 1070. But like all 1070s, it does have a large number of CUDA cores cut out. Pascal is very similar to the design of Maxwell, with multiple refinements of the architecture to improve the efficiency and speed thanks to subtle changes in both design and the 16nm FinFET process from TSMC. With Pascal, the full GP104 has 20 SM units, however 5 are disabled on the GTX 1070, leaving just 15. That's 128 CUDA cores per SM, leaving 1920 for the 1070, while the full-blown 1080 has 2560. TMUs are also cut by the same percentage, but very importantly, the ROP count, the memory cache, and the memory controller are completely untouched with the GTX 1070. And combine this with a hefty improvement in clock speed, 17, 1800 or even 2000 megahertz is not uncommon for GTX 1070s, especially with the Gaming X, you start looking for insane amounts of performance. Pascal also brought in better color compression to reduce memory bandwidth usage, with Nvidia claiming a 1.7 times um, improvement in bandwidth, and full HDR color support. 
As we'll find out from our benchmarks, this means that Pascal has an absolute massive improvement over the older generation. In terms of raw performance, however, the architectures on paper do look very similar. NVIDIA have also made numerous improvements for Pascal's preemption, which allows real-time workloads, which is excellent for things such as virtual reality, but asynchronous compute is still lacking compared to, to the GCN architecture from AMD, and that is an unfortunate downside for the Pascal architecture and one of the few negatives. So let's focus on the primary reason that you're going to be buying a graphics card, the performance. The regular GTX 1070 comfortably asserts its will on the older generation of both Maxwell and GCN cards and shows the new RX 480 the difference between a mainstream and an enthusiast GPU. The Gaming X makes a compelling case for itself compared to the vanilla GTX 1070 thanks to its clock speed advantage, particularly due to the card's RRP closely matching NVIDIA's set pricing for the Founders Edition of the card. What we have here is a GPU which outclasses the flagship cards from the previous generation at a lower cost. We suspect the target market for this card will be owners of a 1440p display, as the GPU doesn't quite deliver a locked 60fps performance for 4K gamers. So for 4K gamers, we'd recommend setting your sights on a 1080p. But for 1440p or extreme 1080p gaming, the GTX 1070 delivers and then some. Seeing the FPS counter in Doom using Vulcan is a distinctly dirty pleasure. Fortunately, the GTX 1070 has taught NVIDIA a lot of valuable lessons when it comes to cutting ROPs and memory controllers, and the vastly increased amount of RAM over Maxwell reduces the stuttering in texture-intensive applications and high-resolution gaming. Because of Pascal's Boost 3.0 technology, Clock speeds will vary based upon the GPU's heat and levels of GPU utilization. It's not uncommon to see the Gaming X hit speeds close to 2 GHz because of this technology, and thanks to the Froza cooler, the card remains virtually whisper quiet in a benchmark rig throughout multiple runs of games and benchmarks. We'll touch more on clock speeds during the overclocking discussion later on in this video. So let's go through MSI's and NVIDIA's exclusive applications, as after all part of buying a new GPU is the functionality and exclusive features that it offers as well as of course the performance. In the case of some of the MSI applications, they'll actually check the GPU vendor, and thus if it's not made by MSI it will not function and load. So in this sense the technology is exclusive, however Afterburner runs across various vendor GPUs. So the gaming app allows you to change the GPU's lighting mode, as we saw earlier on in this video, select from predefined clock settings for either maximum performance or quieter operations, or a balance of both. These settings can then be loaded into the company's Afterburner software, so if you want to make further tweaks to these settings, you can, and just use these as like a base. MSI also allow you to have an on-screen display to monitor your system as you're gaming, but if you choose to, you can also view this on your smartphone or tablet, which is really handy for monitoring overclocking, whether that's a CPU or GPU, or taking a look at VRAM and other system utilization. Dragoneye lets you overlay a YouTube video or Twitch stream or similar over whichever game you're playing. It's not a feature I've used much personally, but I imagine it might be useful if you're doing grinding on say an MMO and you want something to distract you. You can pause the video and make adjustments if you press a keyboard shortcut. It would be really nice if a full YouTube interface uh, would be added to Dragoneye in the future, but currently it's a nice piece of software. Let's show this working by overlaying one of my videos, the Project Scorpio analysis, while playing The Witcher. Beautiful as ever. 
and also tackling subjects like high dynamic range 4K. But this is a very large subject and of course change over the coming weeks as both the Neo and Scorpio emerge. So with that said, I guess the best thing is let's start. Microsoft formally announced the Xbox Scorpio during its E3 2016 press conference, even showing off a trailer for the console. The reveal was so surprising because of a couple of reasons. The system won't be ready until holiday 2017, almost 18 months into the future as of the time I'm recording this, and the second reason is the massive performance Microsoft are touting the Scorpio to offer. Overclocking Pascal relies on an offset, and the GPU will dynamically raise or lower its clocks depending on how complex the scene is. Complex scenes, and the GPU will raise its clocks more for performance, and vice versa if there's a simpler, less taxing scene to keep the card cooler. We managed to crank the Gaming X to 2080 core, while the RAM went up to a staggering 9400 MHz effective, thus providing an increased performance of around 10 to 15 percent. We suspect it's not heat that's throttling the card from going higher, but power draw, despite maxing the voltage values in Afterburner. At such speeds, however, the card is within spitting distance of the GTX 1080 in many benches. NVIDIA's control panel provides total control over the card's functions, allowing you to do everything from adjusting color output to forcing anti-aliasing mode and estropic filtering, change um, downsampling or scaling. Downsampling, NVIDIA refers to it as DSR or Dynamic Super Resolution, is extremely interesting for older titles or for those of you who do a lot of emulation. For example, you could theoretically go from 4K all the way down to 1080p, which is very handy. NVIDIA's control panel, even a year ago, was better than AMD's by a considerable margin, but AMD have made major improvements to their Crimson drivers, and this means that NVIDIA's control panel is now functionally identical to AMD's, but looks a little bit uglier in the UI, so I do slightly prefer the aesthetic of AMD's at this point. NVIDIA does shine, however, when it comes to GeForce experience, particularly if you do a lot of in-game recording. The GPU records and encodes with little to no performance with shadow play and even lets you capture the desktop. Some DX12 titles can be a bit trickier. While AMD does have gaming evolved, shadow play is several steps above it in our opinion. And the hard drive overheads are also a lot lower than traditional applications such as Fraps and it's less of a pain to set up than DX Tory. So for bang for buck, shadow play is handier, simpler and just nicer to use. GeForce Experience also allows you to easily update your GeForce drivers and automatically configures the graphics options in-game if you just want to quickly optimize a bunch of titles at once. NVIDIA's Ansel technology allows you to freely adjust the in-game camera angle and take ultra-high resolution screenshots which you can then export to Photoshop and otherwise manipulate. Because this is done in-engine, it allows you to adjust the field of view, lighting, and other assets of the image before the snapshot is taken, thus improving the quality and the textures and the overall uh, image fidelity is often breathtaking. Unfortunately, this feature wasn't released during our time with the GTX 1070, so we couldn't try it ourselves for this review. One note is that not all games work, and titles require updates and patches for this feature to be enabled. For those who love in-game artwork, machinima and wallpaper creation, or sharing your images on forums, I imagine it will be a very popular feature. So, what's the conclusion we've reached with the MSI GTX 1070 Gaming X? Well, the Gaming X, along with other such custom cards, largely makes the Founders Edition GTX 1070 feel even more overpriced. It's not that the Founders Edition is of poor quality or necessarily bad value, is that the Gaming X just offers that much better value and performance. It pushes the GTX 1070 past what the Maxwell flagships were capable of, and it just looks fantastic while doing so. For gamers who are doing most of the gaming at 1080p or 1440p, the 1070 Gaming X represents staggering value for money. But for those with a 4K display and stickler for 60fps, you might be forced to cough up the extra cash and go for a GTX 1080. For everyone else, the GTX 1070 Gaming X is a gorgeous looking card, offering a notch above vanilla GTX 1070 performance, and it does this while running cool and whisper quiet. 
if you are willing to pay the price premium for the Gaming X over a regular card, we wouldn't hesitate to recommend the GPU. The only slight weaknesses in the Pascal architecture are asynchronous compute, which hopefully the company will address with the upcoming Volta architecture, which is due to be released at some point mid-2017 or possibly slipping into 2018. But, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Uh, let us know your thoughts and opinions on the new review format. But for now, I'm going to let you get going. Once again, I just want to say verbally that this is a review sample and we were not allowed to keep the card and we are not being paid for our opinion. So it is, once again, just a review. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. You'll do the likey subscribe your thing and I'll see you around soon. Bye for now.